Army Air Forces had selected several sites in, uh, around Arkansas, uh, one in Newport and Stuttgart and Blytheville, and, and uh, they'd selected one over at Halls, Tennessee. And when they started the, doing the survey at Halls, Tennessee, they determined it'd have to move five million cubic yards of dirt. The only thing they had to move the dirt with were a few road graders, and so Washington told them to find another site. So they sent a scout plane out with a, with a board of officers aboard to, to look for another site. And popped over Crowley's Ridge and saw all this flat land out here and circled around a few times and came back the next day by car and asked the Corps of Engineers from Little Rock to join them. And they liked what they saw, spent a couple of weeks here in Walnut Ridge. And on the 15th of, of April, 1942, they submitted a recommendation that this become a substitute site for Halls, Tennessee. So that moved up the chain of command, was approved by Maxwell Air Force Base uh, in, on April 25th to 42, and on May the 12th, the War Department in Washington, Washington told the Corps of Engineers to come here and build an airfield. Said build three runways and plan for more. So their drawings show eight possible runways here at Walnut Ridge. Bunch of runways. At the time it was built, it was the largest training base in a Southeast Training Command. Had the largest land area of any of the airports in Arkansas. It covered 3,096.22 acres of land. Had five auxiliary fields and uh, cost about $10.5 million to build it. If you convert that to today's dollars, that would be about $160 million. So it, it was a big, out, a big place, had about 500 buildings three runways, a 63-acre ramp, or apron, some folks call it, and uh, was just a, a big operation. Of course, they were in a hurry to get pilots trained, and they actually started training pilots long before the construction was ever finished, so they, they didn't build the last building until December of 1943. So, And then shortly after that, they decided they'd built too many airfields, and they closed it. It operated for about 22 months. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. As an Army airfield. Then, it, then, uh, then the Marine Corps came in. During the hurricane season, they moved inland, some of their bases inland to Walnut Ridge and Newport. So they operated here from September of 44 until the early part of 45, and then they left. And then it was kind of without any tenants until uh, the... Uh, Reconstruction Finance Corporation, the War Assets Administration, decided to use it for one of the big storage and sales and salvage facilities. And so they, some folks say they brought 10,000 warbirds in here. Uh, one book says they had 11,000. We don't have an actual count. We have photographs that were made in November of, of uh, 45 and November the 15th, 45. At that time, there were probably just over 5,000 airplanes here. and They were continuing to bring them in at the rate of about 125 a day. And they brought them in up through early 47. In March of 47, we have some additional aerial photographs that show a whole lot more airplanes here. So we know there were a lot of airplanes. They, they didn't know what to do with these airplanes after the war. They first thought about taking them apart, you know, and saving the parts. A lot of the airplanes that they brought here were brand new, especially the B-32s. They only made 118 B-32s and, and uh, brought some sources say 67 here. A couple of newspapers say 87. I tend to think the 67 number is correct. But all B-32s were scrapped, chopped up and melted, not a single one in the whole world. So it, it served that uh, as a salvage facility then, uh, they sold 4,871 of these airplanes to uh, outfit in Texas, Texas Railway Equipment Company. And they came in here and, and they'd take the engines off and remove the batteries and the instruments and, and uh, 
all of the components like that. And then they'd tow them down by the two smelters they built, and they'd chop them up and push them off in the smelters and melt them. So that was, uh, that was quite, a, quite a big operation. That ended in early 1948. And then there was nothing much here on the airfield until 1953 and the, uh, uh, not, I'm sorry, 1956, the, uh, the uh, U.S. Air Force, during the Cold War with Russia, established an early warning radar squadron here, known as the 725th Aircraft Control and Warning Squadron. They operate from 1956 until 63. So this, the Quonset huts that you see over here, the buildings with the round tops, the 27 houses that were given to the city of Walnut Ridge after they pulled out, later sold to Williams Baptist College. All of that was built for the 725th. And where V&B, the handle factory is on the northeast corner of the airport, those buildings over there were built for the 725th. That's where their antenna farm was located. Yeah, it was given to the city, uh, actually 1,100, uh, I think I told you it covered 3,096.22 acres. 1,108 acres were given or sold back to the original landowners. And then the college bought the chapel and the chapel site. That was just over an acre. And then they were negotiating to buy uh, 121 acres and, and uh, scores of buildings that were on, the, on those acres. And the, the government... Uh, I suppose Congress passed a law that allowed the government to give uh, surplus facilities like this to educational institutions. And so they actually gave the college 121 acres for educational purposes. The balance of the land, 1,866 acres, which included the water system, the sewer system, and scores of buildings, they gave to the city of Walnut Ridge to use as a public airport. And they gave them, of course, a lot of farmland that was included in that 1866. They gave them a lot of farmland, and the income from that is supposed to help support the airport. Well, we just thought that the airport had been a really uh, important asset to the community. You know, it was it was uh, it was established here just shortly after the Depression, and I guess we could say that that Walnut Ridge and, and Northeast Arkansas really hadn't recovered fully from the Depression. There were a lot of vacant buildings in Walnut Ridge, a lot of people without jobs, probably 25% of the area folks didn't have jobs. And if you had a job, you were probably making 50 cents a day, maybe a dollar a day at the most. And so the airfield created about 1,500 construction jobs. And uh, then after it was completed, then it created a lot of, of jobs. They had about perhaps as many as, a, as 800 or 1,000 people, work, civilians, working out here on the airfield. So it created a lot of jobs, and all the stores in town filled up, and, and uh, the streets were, were covered with, with uh, military personnel on the weekends and whatever. And so it, it, was, uh, it was a big boost to the economy. Folks that had been starving could come out here and get a job making 50 cents or a dollar an hour. That was big money in those days. So it was a, it was a good thing for the, for the area. Of course, a lot of the guys that uh, came here found local girls and they fell in love and got married. And, and uh, so it was, it, was a, it was quite an asset to the community. We just felt that the history was really important. Uh, you know, a lot of many hundreds of people from Lawrence County went into service, and a lot of them didn't return, of course. And, and uh, World War II was was quite a trying time. So that's kind of how we got here. We started in 1999, and across the road, little building that's now used by the radio club. It was built by the city in 1952. It was the first building they built here after the war, after they acquired the property. They tore down the two smelters that were down on the southwest ramp near where Fred is today. And they used the fire bricks from those smelters to form this building. So the interior walls, uh, exterior walls are all made of fire brick and then they faced it with the red brick and plastered the inside walls. And they later came in, put in furring strips and put it, some paneling in it. But uh, if you tear it down today, you'll see a lot of fire brick in there that came out of the smelters. 
We probably get about uh, an average of around five or six thousand people per year. Pretty good, pretty good visitation rate. Well, we've had people from pretty well all 50 states. We had a guy ride in here from from California on his motorcycle, and he said, uh, he said, I'm so and so, and I was born in your base hospital. He said, my dad was an instructor here, and my mom came to be with him, and I was born in the base hospital. So we've we've uh, run across probably a half dozen different people that were born in a base hospital. We have people from foreign countries come here. Of course, they don't come here. They don't travel to Walnut Ridge from a foreign country just to see us, but they're in Arkansas or the United States for some other reason. In Walnut Ridge, for some reason, they hear about us and come to see us. So lots of several foreign visitors. Well, they can expect to, to learn about the history of the airfield, number one, and learn quite a lot about World War II. We have several World War II exhibits. Uh, one of our newer exhibits is, uh, is an American Overseas Cemetery exhibit. So we, we tell about and depict all of the overseas cemeteries and tell where they're located. And we have, uh, we have uh, a list of all the Arkansans that are buried o overseas. And we have a display of the Lawrence County folks that are buried in overseas cemeteries. Have a nice Holocaust exhibit. We have a what we call a hard times exhibit. So the school kids that come in that have no idea at all in this day of cell phones and 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 little computers, you know that you wear your thumbs out on. They have no idea what life was like back in the 30s and 40s when Grandma and Grandpa were living. So we have a an exhibit on the hard times and and uh, a picture of the school that was on this property and was torn down to accommodate the airfield. And we have a, a display a exhibit on production in World War II and mobilization and aviation cadet exhibit and a home front exhibit. And then we have quite a lot of World War II exhibits we're adding to that. Built a new addition a couple of years ago uh, on the south end and that when we finish will be all World War II stuff and we'll tell the story of uh, in a in a condensed form of course of World War II. So lots of uh, lots of interesting things in here. Oh, we'd love to see one or more of the uh, nose art panels that were cut off here in 1946. 34 nose art panels in the American Air Power Heritage Museum in Midland, Texas. And uh, they have, they have these beautiful, beautiful panels that were cut off, big bombers here in Walnut Ridge, cut off with crash axes, and these panels are huge. They may be eight or 10 feet across and six or eight feet high, and on the back, they had the jagged edges in the metal where they were cut with a fire axe, and on the back side will be the bundles of wire and the hydraulic tubes and everything. And, Love to have some of those, but I don't know if we'll ever get one or not. But it would be nice to have. I'd like to have more room, of course. I'd like to have an exhibit. I'd like to have an exhibit hall where we could honor and and uh, and remember every Arkansas veteran from World War II forward. You know that uh, that that uh, has served our country, and we'd love to do that. We think they need to be honored. And you know, some after the war, some counties published something almost like a high school annual that, that had a, a picture and a little brief biography of every man that served in, in service during the war. We think that those folks ought to be honored. I'd like to see that in our museum. There are a lot of people around here that don't even know the museum exists. I mean, people in Walnut Ridge and Lawrence County and Polk Hunnis, and we'd like to see them learn about us, and we'd like to have them come out and visit the museum, visit the airfield, take a tour, and see where the where the buildings were, and 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 how big the place was during the during the war when it was in operation, and and uh, we we just think that would be nice. We'd like for them to see our library, and we have over two thousand volumes of books, primarily aviation and World War II, primarily, but we do have. A lot of volumes on the other wars. We have a collection of airfield annuals and class books from all over the United States, uh, probably about 400 volumes, and uh, that, that show the aviation cadets that were in training back in World War II. We have news maps. Each week of the war, they published a news map. 
that would be a lot of weeks, but we have about 50 news maps of, of the war, and uh, we, we have some of those on display. We will be displaying more, and our, our goal is to get a, a display where we can rotate that exhibit and about every month change it out so it would have different maps in there. So lots of things. One of our other projects we'd like to see, we have a World War II hangar here that we've now gotten on the National Register. We'd like to see that hangar restored. It was used as a maintenance facility and a training facility during the war. A lot of the folks that came in here to work didn't have any prior experience, mechanical experience, but they trained them here locally and they worked on airplanes during the war and made a great contribution to the training program. Mm -hmm.